Okay, so uh, I'm recording this on December 27th, uh, and I went into HMV to see if they had scuff on seal. They did a lot of it. Um, to be honest, what scuff wasn't really interested in, or if I was, I'd already got it. But something I did see is uh, a lot of the South Park DVD box sets uh, were reduced to. If the camera will focus, no, it won't, but you can see it anyway. Two ninety nine, yeah. Two ninety nine. Interestingly, seasons um, one through uh, sixteen were two ninety nine. Apart from season fourteen, season fourteen was six ninety nine, and uh, all the way up to and seasons um, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Uh, yeah, I think it was up to twenty. What all six ninety nine each? But yeah. Uh, here it is. Um, I basically, to be honest, I wasn't planning on getting a South Park season box set. Uh, to be honest, I haven't got one in a while. The reason I did is because I've been skiing at my granny's house, and uh, unfortunately, um, at the moment, I'm without internet. Uh, basically, at the minute. So until that gets sorted here, I've got no internet. So this is basically, I got this, you know, so I've got something to watch. Essentially, while I'm here, and to be honest, three quid for this brand new, you know, from HMV. And it is a three disc set. Now obviously the original packaging uh, that this would have came with would have been the mm, season 15 probably would have been a full day out style. But yeah this is also when uh, South Park seasons were 14 episodes long as well so yeah it's good to have this finally you know have this in the collection uh, I probably will rip them you know just for prosperity's sake um, something to note though with HMV their point scheme is ending it's going to be changing on the 13th of January so probably after this video has already gone out it's already changed by that point but it's a bit annoying that uh, they said that the points will transfer over and not and uh, the app is saying that they won't I'm going to ask in the store about this you know see if I can get any more details on it but it seems like it's not and it's it is a shame because you know I had quite a few points up actually I had close to having um, 50 pound worth voucher and unfortunately that is just gone like it's flown the coop unfortunately so yeah, um, you know, we'll see what happens with the next point scheme. Uh, hopefully it's, it'll be, um, you know, something similar to the last one where if you spend so much, you get so many points and then you get uh, money off out the score because the other stuff, you know, that was offered like, I don't know, you could enter a competition to win something or get a, fr get a free post score with so many points to us. Who really cares about that, you know, just spend the points, you know, then get a voucher and that that's basically the best way in the way you know, personally out way I hope it would work. Yeah, but it is nice actually to have it on an app. To be honest, it just gets easier. Even though I do have my card, but at all times it is just easier having it on an app. But uh, yeah, I am um, bought that today. Also actually, uh if you think it works up with this weird angle the camera is not uh, on top of the tripod hence the tripod is here no uh, I have to show you what it was propped up on it was propped up on my uh, slush machine which frankly is really frustrating and really shit for the main reason is in the I had to actually watch Barry Lewis's video on this slush uh, puppy slush machine because to be honest it's it's to be honest it's a glorified automatic version of uh, those um, slush puppy cups where you basically mush it to make your own slush it's basically it is just a massive mixer essentially and you need a fuck ton of ice it doesn't actually you know make the slush itself it just spins it round um, in the freezer actually I've got a lot of ice you need an awful lot of ice I'm telling you but the thing is, the thing I was going wrong with this is that you look in this booklet, the official booklet, 
and on the official video, and it says, uh, and you know, it just says pouring your syrup, which I did, nothing. However, if you look on the bottle, yeah, it's written on the bottle, but not the instructions. It says that you actually uh, need to dilute it. Yeah, and to be honest, that should have been made a bit clearer. And this is the revised version of it. On the older bottles, it was in even smaller text, so... Yeah, why... Do... Also, this is a newer version of the instruction manual as well. S just like, why do they not put it in the instruction manual? Make sure you, you dilute the syrup to whatever it says it needs to be on this, you know. Otherwise, it won't fucking work. Anyway, that's it for this piece. Hmm. Okay, so I've got a vinyl record here. I can't actually remember what this one is. Oh wow, that was... Okay, so that's what that was. That was very quick delivery, like. So if you can see there... So... This one, I'm going to take out, because this one's a bit weird. So as you can see, this is Planet Pit. Special edition uh, vinyl record. It's a translucent blue colour. And uh, this thing is kind of like an unofficial official record, to be honest. Um, and it wasn't very expensive either. Well, you can see it's like an unofficial official. It's basically, um, this is meant, I think, for DJs. Normally they are DJs when they're in this type of uh, sleeve like that. But you know, it'll play on my turn till we'll find because, you know, all records are the same. But uh, on the sticker price, you can see there, it was 13 49 Yeah, although the delivery was a bit expensive at, uh, I think it was £4 something delivery. Though, it did come pretty cheap. I ordered this um, on Boxing Day, and it's now December 28th. So it came in just two days. So yeah, yeah, that's pretty pretty fast delivery. Next thing, got a little package here. So, you know, what, let's let's uh, move that light a bit. This light I've got in the corner is causing any flickering that is going on. So apologies for that. But at the moment, it is just so dark. Oh yeah, it's wow. This is pretty good value, so I thought it would be a five pack, it's not, it's just five individual ones. You might remember these, these Philips 46 minute cassettes, I know it's a really odd length, but I got these ones off Amazon, not off eBay, and a five pack of these, and I just dropped them. I see five pack, they're not an actual five pack. Um, I guess five cassettes, obviously, but they were listed as a five pack anyway, but it doesn't matter. These cost three pound with free delivery. That is a really good price for these, even though they're only 46 minutes, you know, 23 minutes per side. I do have some uses for them. Plus, uh, some cassettes I do just like to put my own uh, music on, like this one, the each, generally the cheaper ones, which I find for just listening. I do use uh, for that, so uh, yeah, that is good for that. And then we've got this final box, which says Fragile on it.
They've used an old hot chocolate hotel chocolate box. With even the bloody wrapper in it as well. But trust me, uh, this is not chocolate. It's more cassettes. It's some, uh, well, more than just cassettes, it's some more uh, vintage cassettes, yeah. So I'm going to switch into uh, manual focus. So. Yeah, it's about right. Okay. Because I keep switching. Um, and I'll just, I'll just grab some. <clears throat> so this cost me. Think about eight quid. I'll say that about eight pounds. So most of you watching this, I mean nothing to you, but some of you, you know, who grew up in the eighties, nineties, probably bring back some nostalgia. Okay, so this ah, your classic TKD. Actually, you know what? Let's change. There we go. Okay, so. Yeah, it's an old TKD. These are all used, uh, but I just wanted to get some, just to have, you know, some... Because, to be honest, some of these, like this one... I got this simply because I just like the look of it. I know that may sound stupid, but some of them I just like the look of. Also, it's nice to have some uh, older type larger uh, standard size cassette uh, boxes, because the newer ones actually all use slim cases actually from the late nineties onwards. Got another TKD one. This one uh not special this is more standard shell. Was this one a ninety minute? Yeah, it's more of a standard one from the time. But again, you know it'll be useful for uh, these ones I'll probably use to make my own recordings on, like just for listening to music. Ooh, this one's in an interesting shell. So this next one, we've got a Memorex. You gotta have a Memorex. But yeah, this one has an interesting box actually. It's all uh, rounded at the corners and everything. Ooh. That this one opens like this. To us, I really like the box on this one. That is a really nice box. Now this is like your typical, you know, late seventies, eighties uh, sort of cassette shell. And oh boy, is this one, you know. They are they are pretty cheap. This one, but the box for it is actually really nice. Yeah, FS. Yeah, to a lot of people this will be nostalgia. Obviously, for me and most of my, pretty much most of my audience watching this will not be. Uh, yeah, this is a tight one, isn't it? I believe it is. Let's wind it on. Yeah, it's a tight one. Most of these are tight ones. Oh, oh, actually, that door will be useful. Actually, this box will be useful for something else. So, got more though. Another TKD one. Also, if you, can, if you can hear a hiss in the background, that's because I've got the oven on. So yeah, this is a, you know, by the looks of it, a 90s one. And uh, none, of the, none of these seem to be rewound. I'll be curious to see actually what's on it, because uh, on all the track listings on these, that's absolutely bugger all. Now this, this is an old one, you can just tell by the look of it. This is an old TKD. 
You can just tell by the box. Yeah. And oh my god, looking at the tape, the, the label is literally. Okay, look at that. That is an old TKD 90, and the label is just utterly, utterly coming off on both sides. Yeah, that is a very old TKD. This one actually does have track listings on here. Okay, a few of these you might recognise, but yeah, this is what the last person wrote on these. So, uh, good for them. And uh, we get going to, uh, hang on, there should be another, I swear. Oh yeah, I've put it here. I put it here. So we're down to the last three now, and these are the three that I was actually interested in. So these first two uh, are just for their looks. And they're pretty similar, so I'll show them at the same time. There's a couple of Maxwells. But I got them because I just really like the look of them. I just think they look quite nice actually like that. So these ones I got simply because I liked the look. Look, nothing else, I just like the look of them. And this one, this one looks like a Lisa version of the same one. Uh, yeah, this one just like the name, and this one actually has a sticker on it. It's upside down. Rachel playing the horn. What is Rachel playing the horn? Ooh. Let's, let's see if we can get a bit of uh, Rachel playing the horn, shall we? And for an audience in the 1630s, this music would have had the frisson of uncomfortable reality. Let's try the other side. It's probably at all the way at the beginning. Yeah, trust it, the one that's rewound, it's, pro it's probably someone's daughter, I'm assuming. And the final one. And this is my first of these. A blank chrome tape. Which I, I do quite like the look of this one. Um, what brand is this? Oh, that's a bit annoying. There's a little bit of uh, damage in the tape there. It's folded a bit. But, yeah, I do quite like the look of this one, and it is my first uh, chrome tape. Which, I'm just going to rewind. No idea what brand this is, because, like, standard shell. Yeah. But anyway, I got them, which is giving a weird sort of powdery texture on my fingers. So I'm going to put them to the side. So, yeah. I'm going to switch back to uh, auto. So yeah, that's basically some stuff I've gotten in the post today. Ooh. So, yay! Okay, I'm actually going to show you something um, I got yesterday. And it's this. Now, my brother said, oh, is it an ironing board? And then I told him to think a minute, why the fuck would I buy an ironing board? No, it is not an ironing board. 
this was £2.50 at IKEA. Normally it was £3.50. Uh, and in fact, we, but just this colour, because initially I was going to get a black version of this. But uh, I saw that this one was cheaper. So I just thought, ah, the colour isn't completely awful. So isn't the worst colour in the world. So I thought, why not? Save me a little, little bit, and I do mean a little bit, but. It's a box. You might be thinking, why the fuck do you need a box like this? You know? But uh, this is actually uh, going to be. Uh, I'm going to put probably my Doctor Who vinyl records are going to go in here, just exclusively them. And the main reason is, is that after Christmas, um, my record shelf uh, basically has got full up, essentially. I've run out of space, so I'm essentially going to move the Doctor Who ones uh, into here, because I like to keep them uh, separate, as it were. So they can all go in there, and yeah, 250 for that. Yeah, I was thinking of getting some sh shelving units, however, um, I'm going to... I'm going to see how things are going to go because I'm probably going to rearrange things around a bit just to see how everything fits. So, you know, I don't want to get something that might not fit in the space that I'm going to create for it or if I move things around. So, yeah, I might even do a video on uh, moving uh, myself and I, uh, my room at my grinds, which is the hi-fi room essentially around let me know actually if you would like to see that video or maybe that video has actually already gone out who knows but yeah that's what I'm gonna be doing there okay it is December 31st 2019 at the time of recording this and uh, I've got a few things to show you the first thing for something um, that I got for eBay from China and it is not fucking as advertised but it only cost me 250 uh, with free delivery, though I might see if I can get my money back. This is supposedly a metal tape or a metal cassette. And uh, for those of you who don't know, um, cassette tapes come in four or really three different types. Type one, your standard type ferric, and that is around about 90% of cassettes. Type two is chrome. Tape which is got better travel than um, ferric, but ferric has better base. There's type three which doesn't really exist because it was just like a very short-lived thing back in the late seventies, which is uh, ferrochromium, which is ferric and um, chrome that are mixed together, which doesn't really exist. And then type four, which is metal. And metal tapes are now pretty expensive. Uh, these days because, well, they stopped making them. Mm, I'm going to say 90s, though they might have still been around in the 2000s, but I never remember seeing any metal tapes in um, any shops uh, when I was growing up. I remember, I saw, uh, during the 2000s, I saw uh, ferric and even some chrome ones uh, still. Um, but never ever saw any uh, chrome any metal but they might have existed but you might have only but yeah by winding this that is ferric plus also what would was immediately the giveaway with this um, was also the notches on the top a metal tape would also have a couple of notches in the middle as well, which this one um, clearly does not have. So yeah, this is two pound fifty, and it feels two pound fifty cheap as well. Very cheap, even cheaper than um, where is one of them? I did have one. In fact, you know what? I do have one. Editing my ass. This is how we do things, we do things live. But yeah, um, even cheaper than one of these uh, cassettes from uh, Poundland. 
the Hot or House of Technology ones, which are pretty cheap, uh, which you'll generally find, you know, on Alibaba, Alibaba, uh, AliExpress, Alibaba. What the fuck am I on about? And uh, sites like this, you know, this feels pretty cheap. Um, <coughs> the box itself is interesting. It's not your your standard uh, cassette box. To be honest, um, the box I quite like actually. It's it's interesting, and uh, it doesn't feel uh, brittle like a regular cassette case. The only thing is, you can't put a J card in this one. Mm, well, you technically could, but it would get creased and folded. That was two pound fifty. And to be honest, I might see if I can get my money back on uh, this if I can. If I can't, then it's only two fifty. To be honest, I kind of I knew that it wasn't going to be a metal tape. You know, I, I knew it wasn't going to be a metal tape. Though um, I thought, you know what, for two fifty, I'll give it a chance. See if it is. But anyway, speaking of tapes, uh, not cassette tapes, but these, in fact I'll just show one of them because they're both the same. This is the smallest tape ever made. And you might be thinking, oh is that like, you know, a micro tape, you know, you'd have in an answering machine. No, this is a Sony digital micro tape or a Sony NT tape. And these are literally this, this small, they are bloody tiny. And this one go open because you can, uh, by the looks of them, easily reseal these by the looks of it. Yes, you can. So I'm going to get this out. But yeah, uh, the both of them cost me £12 with free delivery, but... You know, just look at that. How teeny tiny this thing is. I mean... Uh, again, just for comparison, like look at that. And most of this thing here is just the box, but we slide it out. You might remember Techmoan's uh, video if you watch technology videos, which is how I found out about this. Now. I have no way of playing or recording to this tape. This itty bitty tape, and it's so small, we're, we're switching to manual focus, people. But that is a small tape. I mean, uh, what else have I got uh, for comparison? Um, here we go, here we go. Here's a teaspoon. And this is just an ordinary sized teaspoon. I'm just looking at this. And this holds two hours. This holds two hours. This one only holds a single hour. This cassette. This cassette holds a single hour, this one holds two. They also did 90 minute ones as well. But yeah. To be honest, uh, this is actually more similar to a VHS tape um, in the way that it works compared to a cassette. And also, unlike a regular cassette tape, which is analog, this, hence the name digital micro tape, is completely digital. And essentially, you know, there's the thing is, the reason I don't have anything to play this um, cassette with is that there were only two models of uh, Sony tape, um, portable tape recorders that actually used this tape, the Sony NT1 and the Sony NT2, which I've got saved search for on um, eBay to see if it ever comes in stock. And if it does, um, I will buy one. 
as long as the price isn't too ridiculous, I know it, it's going to be expensive, no doubt, but hopefully it'll not be uh, too ridiculously expensive. I'm and um, I am prepared to pay, you know, a fair bit for this, for one of them. Just, and you might be thinking, you know, um, you're completely mad, what is wrong with you? But, um, it's basically because, well, I can, and I'd like to, because this is just something that fascinates me as such an unusual format, which, to be honest, I wish had have taken off. To be quite fair, because um, the reason this came to fruition, really, is because at the time when this came out, which was um, 19... late 90s, early 2000s, I think, I can't remember exactly, um, SD cards were still really, really expensive um, for the co you know cost per gigabyte, essentially. So, you know, we, we weren't really into the whole uh, MP3s and carrying everything around because that was still expensive. That was still a little bit iPod, you know, a little bit away yet. Thing is, though, this was never ever marketed as a uh, music player. It was only marketed as a dictation device, which is a shame because Sony clearly intended it for music. They intended because, you know, they put a music mode on the player and actually the specs for this are really good and I wish, and I wish I'd be able to hear it. Now obviously it'll be just digital so, <clears throat> you know, it won't sound different from say the lossless source, of, you know, but still it'd be more interesting and it just makes me think, you know would have been nice would have been just nice, you know, maybe to have another physical format because Physical formats, some of them are in a little bit of trouble at the minute. Um, now, I'm not saying that, you know, physical media is dead, like um, a lot of American uh, YouTubers are saying. It is nowhere near dead. I mean, how come vinyl has made a massive comeback in the past few years, and even bloody cassettes, at least in the UK, not so, not so much the US, but the UK, are slowly making a comeback. And how can you always tell this? Prices, um, yeah. Prices for cassettes have gone up this year quite considerably, actually. Um, yeah, they've gone up a considerable amount this year. But anyway, the last thing I've got to show you, and it's not just one thing, it's three. But they're all the same, so I'll just show you the first one. And uh, it's this. It's some more cassette drawers. Yeah, uh, these ones are pretty much you know like the same as the one ones I had before, except these rather than being black, um, with the wood green, these ones you know are your standard sort of. Um, wooden looking finish to it and uh, I basically got three of these the other two are at my feet I got three of these uh, for five off uh, a guy of Facebook so yeah and actually something I didn't actually film because I didn't bother filming it I did actually get another one of those cassette drawers a singular one like this one uh, all in black uh, for free um, off um, my uh, great uncle uh, basically, so I got one of those for free, um, but you know that one I've already filled one of the drawers on that. So basically, these will keep me going for a bit longer, hopefully. Hopefully, you know they'll get me go going uh, at least for a bit longer, shall we say? But yeah, that's uh, some of the stuff that um, I have got at the minute. I'm still waiting on some more stuff and you know, I don't know when the next um, item some box will be, when this will go out. But yeah, um, I still haven't filmed uh, a 6 second walk since 2019 and I'm running out of time and I'm debating whether to do it regardless. But anyway, that's them, yay. Right, okay, good, the microphone is on. So, it's January 2nd, and, um... 
I technically ordered this before uh, New Year's, but it uh, didn't arrive until now. Um, normally I would get it delivered to the house, actually, this item, but uh, it was delivered to HMV's shop. And the reason it was is because HMV, after Christmas, changed their delivery or might have been just before Christmas games, their delivery uh, terms and conditions. Before it was, you only had to spend a tenner to get free delivery or free home delivery. Um, whereas now you've got to spend £20. Though, you can get it delivered to any HMV store for free still, so yeah. This was twelve ninety nine. This originally was £30 at HMV, actually, I think. And on Black Friday, it went to twelve ninety nine. And unfortunately, um, I went um, looking round HV on Black Friday and I said, Have you got any in? And they said, Oh, yes, it shows that we've got one in stock. And the staff went out and the staff went, Oh, we can't find it. Someone must have picked it up and put it somewhere else. And I looked around the store and I still couldn't bloody find it. But thankfully, it skied at that price, but skied out of stock until just after Christmas. And I think it went back out of stock again. But it's this. It's Scissor Siskers, ta-da! This was $12.99 at uh, HMV, which is uh, the cheapest you can actually get this album uh, on vinyl. Not the cheapest you can get this album, you can actually get this album. Um, I've seen it quite a bit at Poundland actually, on a CD. But yeah, here it is. And I do quite like this. I do really like this um, artwork quite a bit, actually. I think it does look quite nice. Yeah. So we do get a nice sort of little fold out thing here. And uh, Scissor Sisters. You can make so many jokes out of that name. So many jokes, but um, I think I Can't Decide is probably my favourite song on this album. Um, I'll be interested to see whether it has a download code or not. Um, if it doesn't, and uh, you know, um, doesn't matter too much to me this time around. Actually, I think it does. Have a... <laughs> download. I've, I was going to say I've got the CD anyway, so yeah, it does have a download code. Um, so, to anyone who is interested, there you go, go nuts, you get that uh, for free off me, so you're welcome. So yeah, so anyone who wants that, there you go, there's a free little giveaway thing, because uh, I don't need it, I've got the CD. Plastic line, this, oh, we're going to focus, camera. There we go. So yeah, this is plastic lined. It's just gone a uh, standard black vinyl. Hmm. It's not heavyweight, but uh, it's not it's not dead thin. It's basically in between. It's probably a hundred and forty grams, maybe a hundred and fifty. Um, whatever the equipment is, so yeah, not quite heavy weight, but uh, it's not, you know, a thing, piece of shit, you know, yeah, guess the uh, Scissor Siskers logo on there, so yeah, it's quite nice, weirdly only uh, the first two Scissor Siskers albums are um, available properly in the UK, on vinyl, um, on vinyl record, you can get um, their third album on a uh, vinyl, but uh, you have to get it imported, basically. And to be honest, there's not a lot of them left, um, which is a you know shame. But yeah, this is probably their best overall album, I think. Uh, Tada! So yeah, uh, 12 99 can't really argue with that, it was a great price and I'm glad to have it in the collection now. So yeah, um, who knows what I might uh, get next, so yeah, happy days. 
There we go, turn the microphone on. So it's still the 2nd of January, about, uh, actually not very longly, about an hour later. And uh, I'm back home, yeah, at my actual house. <coughs> or rather my parents' house, but anyway. Um, got some more stuff to show you that came in the post here while I was gone. But also, a couple of things I bought today, uh, just before. I went into B&M. And um actually you know what let's 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 just go into manual focus, eh? Hey? There we go. There we go. So yeah, I got an ever ready um six socket extension cord. Which basically I'm all my sockets are essentially well they are full. In fact actually they've been full for quite a while, so this'll mean that um I'll be able to not only, you know, have enough sockets for everything, but also have a couple of spares, which is good. And also from B&M. Uh, I'll get these other things out, hang on. Because we'll get to those in a minute. I got... One, two, three, four packs of uh, Duracell C-cell batteries and those are going to be going in my uh, Alba boombox here which I'll actually do right now because uh, what I remember these batteries. Oh, I did. I decided to get Duracells just because, you know, they should last longer. I should. Rather than put them out, I'm just going to put them straight in the bin. And I think I might. I don't know if I touched any thing bag there, but I'm going to sanitize my hands just in case there was any leakage. I can't... I don't think there is, but I know there wasn't here, so every time I do that I just check to make sure. But anyway, so yeah, Duracell, maybe more expensive, but you do get what you pay for. Some people might say, why not get rechargeable batteries? Because you can get C-cell rechargeable batteries, and that's right, And but here they are much more expensive. And even to find a charger to charge them is more expensive. But the main thing is, is that uh, rechargeable batteries run at 1.2 volts. Um, rather than 1.5. So, basically that can affect the speed at which the cassette is played. So basically the cassette will play, you know, too slowly. Or a little bit slow. It doesn't affect all cassette players, but most it will. I thought this one needed eight, but it only needs six. So I've got an extra pack here. Because we will be needing this in a second actually. And I'll show you why. Let's adjust uh, the focus. So what could this possibly be? If you didn't already know, if, if if you couldn't tell what I was leading into. Yes, it's Robbie Williams. Hooray, this is his second album, I've been expecting you. 
again all nice and lovely on cassette here with uh, and it's rewound hooray and with a uh, Dolby noise reduction Dolby VHX Pro great um, I, well, I see I my dad has a CD so oh my god oh my god not used to seeing this uh, yeah they all they went all out with this this is one six you know right at the end of their day really it's like holy shit man all the lyrics there um and uh, the other side is stuff. And the rest of it is just all the song lyrics, but my god, that is quite a bit. Um, yeah, I can't. How much could this cost me? Actually, um, I'll get my phone out. Let's have a look. How much did it cost me? One pound twenty plus a pound postage. Okay. Ah, oh, this actually has a cassette in it. So we'll just play this. Um, if I look actually what I'm doing, let's play this for a brief second or two. Just gonna for YouTube, you know, not to kill me, hopefully. Whoa, that's not sounding right. That's sounding very, very wobbly. That is sounding really wobbly. I'm just gonna put this cassette back in. Just see if it is the batteries. Don't mind me. No, it, it, see, it seems to work. So the cassette might need a bit of lubrication to it by the sounds of it. Okay, that's sounding a bit better now. So yeah, um, great. That's so working and good. So that's nice. Um, yeah, because I was, you know, I did see on um, eBay. I did see uh, Millennium on there, and I thought, oh, that's cheap. And then for a little bit more, I could just buy the full album. So that's what I did. That's what I did. I did, I did, I did. The and that's why this thing is such a bloody... Mm. That can't be right then. How the hell does this fold back in? then if it's not like that have I done something wrong yeah this is like it uh, things that are like accordions like that are just a nightmare to figure out and also this has this snapped off or is this just I don't know if that was snapped off already or not Gargle 6 off now. Yeah, that's the problem with some of these uh, ones. The doors do just snap off them. Let's get on to this box. 
which actually, I don't know if you can see that, it's uh, Huggies Baby Wipes box, this is, that they've used. It's not mine. It's not mine, this. Uh, it's clearly something for my sister. Oh, well. <clears throat> yeah. Hey. I don't know, but anyway. That was some stuff. Bye. Or on to the next thing, or whatever there be. Okay, apologies, I'm having to film this video pretty quickly. And, um, yeah, so... I got this from America. Yeah, because for some reason it's not available here in the UK. Young Dracula, the complete fifth season. And interestingly, the Blu-ray box does not have the uh, Blu-ray logo. And also, Young is not in the Young Dracula font, yet Dracula is. Whatever. Now this, I did get off eBay. Uh, it's also available on Amazon for... Um, on Amazon, I think it's 19 on eBay. It's... Uh, I think this was £19.19 .19 with free delivery. And as you can see, it... Just includes all 13 episodes. And that's it. And uh, yeah, to this day, it's Young Dracula. Um, only Series 1 has been released in the UK. On DVD. Just a second. So yeah, only Series 1 has been released. And that's only on DVD. Yet, in America... And Australia, actually, maybe just Australia. Australia has series 1 to 5 that have all been released on DVD. Uh, they're currently not all available to import at the minute, but they have all been released. But they are bloody expensive. But, um, and you know, series um, 2 through 4, obviously, uh, I could get them on DVD uh, from Australia and they would work here, no problem. This um, is a region A, although I'm pretty sure that this will work on a UK Blu-ray player. And if not, doesn't matter anyway because I will be ripping it. Oh! It's all on one disc. Like, this is a really cheap release, this. I think what this is, is one of those, um... Because we don't really have them in the UK, but I know in America they have uh, companies that literally will uh, have the rights to make these really cheap releases like this. But if the episodes are truly in HD, then fine be it. I mean, eh. Each episode is about half an hour long, so... So, you're looking at six and a half hours. Which you can technically fix onto a Blu-ray disc. But, uh, yeah, we'll just... 
We'll just see, uh, actually, but let's just test it out in a standard Blu-ray player. Okay, so I'm in the living room. Uh, this is just like a standard Sony Blu-ray player. So uh, let's see if it loads. And uh, let's just see what the quality of it is going to be like. Let's have a think. Wow, that menu. My God, so we just well, we've got a play or we've just got episode selection. Um, yeah, very basic menu. But again, this probably is an official release. Please do not copyright me, BBC. Eh. I'm wondering if this truly is HD or just upscaled. Because Young Dracula was filmed on a uh, red cameras and actually was filmed in HD. And uh, released in HD um, for its later years. However, uh, you could only watch it on a in HD if you watched it on iPlayer. Actually, um, actually, did we have CBC HD back then? I think we might have for the final series. He's the final couple, but uh, I think series three was only available on HD if you watched it on iPlayer. But yeah, um, yeah it's working. Works fine, and it might truly be in HD, or it might be in 720p. I don't know. Regardless, it is, but, you know, I believe this is probably an official release, but, like, one of those really cheap releases. Because this isn't the first time you, it, you've seen... Uh, this isn't the first time I've seen something like this where an official release... Of something as a really cheap, sort of unofficial looking release uh, in America. So yeah, probably some um, DVD and Blu-ray publishing company in America acquired the rights to Young Dracula and then just uh, released these. So yeah, but regardless, I'm now going to watch this. Okay, so at the moment I'm currently using Hangbreak to uh, convert all of Series 5 of Young Dracula to MP4s to compress the file size down. And uh, I decided to have a look at the bit rates to see what they were. And actually the episodes are, they are in uh, HD, they are full HD. However, this is an episode of Young Dracula. Let's have a look at the bit rates. Audio bit rate, okay, but video bit rates. And then here's an episode of Bo, Bo here's an episode of uh, Bo, Bo Jack Horseman season two Blu-ray, and um, an episode of Doctor Who Trial of Time World Blu-ray. And uh, yeah, just look at the bit rates. So these two, you know, pretty comparable. But this, this is about. Mm, not quite half, just over half. And uh, the file sizes, we take a look at general. And all three of these. So the Bulljack Horseman one, 6.17 gigabytes. And this is actually, you know, a bit shorter. This is about three, four minutes shorter than that. So yeah, and this one, 5.9 gigs. This, 3.36. So yeah, it's not quite as um, high bit rates. That's basically how they've managed to get them all onto one disc. Saying that though, at the end of the day, it is better than a DVD. And it is better than um, streaming it online, actually. Um, basically, because there are a few sites where you can find uh, Young Dracula Series 5 
in I believe set up to 720p HD but not 1080p full HD so this you know is still better quality than that so yeah they basically you know tried to cram it all onto one disc to try and get it in on there so yeah I mean you might say it's probably a bootleg I don't think so though I don't think so and the reason is is because in in America it's available through Amazon's also official warehouses their actual warehouses what I think has happened is with this a distribution company basically um, where's it there we go film rise got the rights to young Dracula in America and uh, basically distributed it as you know cheaply as possible this probably doesn't cost very much over there but it does it. it does cost a little bit over here but yeah it's just the episodes and nothing more also I did notice there is a mistake with this and it's with the episode uh, ordering on the uh, DVD when you're selecting the episodes episodes 4 and 5 although the title is correct um, the episode they're linked to is incorrect so yeah, they kind of fucked that up a bit, but yeah, Other than that it does look fine, it plays fine, and it sounds fine, so even if it is a bootleg, which, eh, if it is, it's a higher quality bootleg, it's not that bad, to be honest, and it's the only way to get, you know, a higher quality copy than what's actually officially available, yeah. As for series 3 and 4, um, I might make my own Blu-rays of that because um, they're only available on DVD in Australia. And I do know uh, a site where they are available in 720p. Not quite that, but maybe I can do a job of that. Maybe put a couple of special features on there because there are a couple of interviews. There's not really much of any behind the scenes at all on Young Dracula, so yeah. And also, if you're wondering why is it sounds like my laptop is trying to take off, that's because I've pressed this button, which is the fan booster, to basically keep everything cool. Basically prevents anything of being, because um, I'm not just rendering, not rendering, uh, well, I'm not just converting files to MB4, I'm doing other things as well. And my mum has set off the smoke alarm again, probably cooking something.